Denver was just one of those places that the time almost lost. So you have to fast forward until the mid 20th century when the Carter House was saved. And then about 20 years later, Carton was saved. So this was lived in by the McGavick family until the turn of the 20th century. And then other families lived here for decades. And so it was saved or rescued, I guess you could say, because of what happened here. I mean, ultimately, it was this horrific battle that was fought on November 30th, 1864. And today, there are about 100,000 people a year who visit um, Carter House. And now, one thing to remember as we go through the home, and we talk to guests about this, of course, the family's long gone. But it wasn't just the family that was here in the years before the war. One thing to we try to point out is, try and imagine the place being really alive. Everywhere you went, you would have seen slavery in some capacity because there were enslaved people throughout the house serving in a variety of capacities. And it's important to remember that because slavery was not this invisible institution. It wasn't just, for example, four or five white people who lived here. There were probably five, six, maybe seven uh, African Americans who were serving as cooks, who were serving as maids, they were taking care of the children. So they're moving throughout the house. They were not servants or anything like that. These were people who were actually owned, who had no choice about whether they could leave or whether they go. Their entire existence was right here. One of the things that the Confederacy tries to do in those early years of the war is curry foreign support. And they're trying to get Britain and France to side with them. But of course, both Britain and France won't have anything to do with an area where there is still slavery, even if they weren't exactly friendly with the United States at that time, and the relationships were a bit iffy, they simply couldn't side with the South. And so ultimately, um, foreign intervention ends up being non-existent. And four years after it started, the, um, the United States Army um, or armed forces emerge victorious and end the rebellion. And then you have, so now slavery's over. Slavery's now been ended. So there are four million people who are freed. And the whole social structure is upside down. You have African Americans who are now free, but they're not equal. You have white people who have only been in power and have lost not just power, but wealth. And it's little wonder we've struggled in this country for 150 years to get right on a lot of things because it was a, it was a toxic mess when the war ended because the country had been preserved and slavery was ended, but little else was resolved. Many times I've walked through here in a Carter house and I've had to admit to myself, I, can, I cannot imagine what life must have been like. What, what happens on the night of the Battle of Franklin, which is on November 30th, 1864, is that Carton becomes a field hospital. And it becomes a hospital exclusively for Southern soldiers. For the McGavick family, this lingered and dragged on. In fact, at Christmas time, there were still three dozen wounded. I don't know how you could ever forget what happened in your own home. They lived with the memories of it every day. This entire generation, white, black, rich, poor, they went through something that no other generation of people in the history of this country have ever endured. Um, this wasn't just a war. This was a, a shredding of the social fabric, completely flawed social fabric, but it was the only existence they knew. And little wonder it's taken generations to, you know, to figure it out. And I think that's why Franklin is actually really important, not just special, because people can come here and not only see this and learn about what happened on that particular day and about this family, but they really can get a sense of what America was going through. I think one thing that's so easy to forget today is that in the 1860s, 
The idea of the United States, as most people know it today, didn't really exist. This was really just an experiment. It was an idea. And it was put to this unbelievable test and almost failed. So this, the United States was this sort of flickering kind of light that if it went out, um, who knows what the future would have been. And I think actually that's where Abraham Lincoln, um, Lincoln is probably the most important president in American history, maybe behind Washington, because I, I think Lincoln saw that. That slavery was the problem that had plagued us from the founding. Slavery had to be ended, but that America had to survive as one thing. Because if it fragmented, it would become like the Balkans. It's not a stretch to say that all of what you see around us, this wealth, this power, was all built on um, the enslaved. <laughs>